Okay, um, what I have here underneath this cover are the concrete trays. Now, why are they under cover? Well, these are made out of uh, concrete, and um, concrete uh, gets more strength as it ages, but it also is a better quality when it's dried slowly. So that's what I did. I pour these, and then I put the cover so that it does dry slowly. And here is an example of how they come out. Um, what I do is cast in this sand bed so that there is a relief this way with nice legs. And then the top, the making the outer edge rough like this, it sort of simulates a, a natural occurring rock, lava rock, or something like that. Um, and the rest of the program, what I plan to do is show you step by step how this is going to do. Uh, this is just sand um, that's kept moist. Um, you know the people that build sand castles, that's what they do, just sand with uh, moisture on it. And um, having taken that uh, one out from the yesterday's pour, now I have to make sure that this form side is back to the way it's supposed to be. It's almost impossible to pull that thing out without doing some sort of damage to the sand. And just go back and smooth it out, that's all. Like this one here, equal amounts of sand and cement. I tried different formulations, I did my tests. My tests consisted of uh, trying different formulas. I would make the, uh, the trays and then see how hard it was to smash it. Um, later I found that if you talk to people in the field, uh, they can help you. Well, they told me uh, one to one is the strongest that you could get. If you use more cement than that, you don't gain any more strength versus if you use less than that, you don't get the strength either. So one to one is the maximum strength. Um, and then this in the bag um, are the concrete coloring that you could buy um, at your professional concrete supply place. This is tan, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of that. It's not scientific. Uh, the other thing too is, I, if you're gonna do this, I wouldn't wear it your favorite shirt or pants, um, and then getting some sort of gloves on too, because um, especially this black, don't want to come off. And I like to put a dash of black. Pinch of this, pinch of that. And today, I want to make this thing a little bit more red than I made in the past, um, so I'll put double dash of red. Now, Using this method, I could never repeat the same process. So each, each time I make these, I'll make like four at a time. So after the four, each one will have a different tint. But uh, basically that's it. Next step is to take this dry mix and fold it. Or just mix it up real good as much as possible before adding water. I found that if you add the water too soon, it seems like you have to work a little bit longer and harder, so do the dry mix first and then start adding the water. Um, it's going to take me another couple minutes to mix, so I'll go ahead and do that and then start the camera again. Okay. Now, this is about right, I think. It's workable, but still stiff enough. What I want to do is to be able to get this rough edge to stay on the out outside of the pot when I get through. So, I'll do the final prep on the bed. I'll show you how this gets all put together nothing to it. Formulas one to one, dash of this, dash of that for color. Oh, in, in terms of the color at this point, it should feel like it's too dark. 
what happens is that as this cures, it will lighten. So it will lighten with age. So at this uh, this stage of the game, the color should be much darker than you think you want. Then you'll. So what's going to happen eventually is the inside is smooth and just this outer edge is rough. Now I'm a little short there. So I'm going to add ooh, too smooth. There you go. Smooth it out. See how simple it is? Now uh, I've shown people this process before and he says, well, you know, if you add this and if you add that, um, I like things simple. This is one-to-one -one with dash of this and dash of that. Um, I don't think you could get any simpler than that. Now, if I was into this as a, a major production and I had to worry about shipping and da-da-da-da-da, then I may worry about it, but basically I like things as simple. Okay, I got the four poured. And you can see that the water coming to the surface. This is part of that drying process. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to wait till it sets up a little bit more, smooth out the bottom, um, do any more touch-ups. But like that outside edge, you really have to stay away from it um, because this roughness is what we're after. Okay. Um, but I also have to uh, punch a hole. I can't punch the hole till the concrete has set up enough so that um, it doesn't fill in on itself again. Okay, um, let me show you the importance of timing. What we need to do is put uh, drain holes. See, too early. Um, That adds to it. Um, punch clean holes. Just a matter of timing. So I'll do this one here. Uh, yeah. It's getting close to 100. So I'm going to, after I finish punching the holes, I'll put the cover. And it'll be just like you saw uh, this morning when I took the covers off. So these are ready to go.